name is Kareem Kanji. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a very special edition of the show today. I am here with one of the co-founders of Mesh, Stuart McDonald. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for stopping by uh, in between Rush concerts and, uh, <laughs> and, and things like that. But um, yeah, let's let's talk about Mesh. We've got an event happening November seventh. But before we you know go into that and and, and what's going to be happening there in November. How did you guys start this? It's been going on for a while. Yeah, and we were, we were so fortunate. We started with the original Mesh Conference now seven years ago. Okay. Um, and it's one of these stories that's sort of, you know, my dad's got a bar and let's put on a show kind of story. All right. Uh, back in the day, it was sort of the very early days of social on the internet. Very, yeah. And there were lots of cool conversations and events happening all over the world. We had the we had uh, Web 2.0 conference happening mm -hmm. in San Francisco. We had Lyft happening in um, in Europe, and there were all these sorts of interesting events going on focused on Web 2.0 and the emergence of social media. Yeah. And so there were there were like five of us initially who got together and said, you know, we should have something like this in Toronto. There's okay. all these cool people doing interesting things. You know, it was also the, it was the rebirth of the web after everything had the dot tanked, bomb. after yeah. the dot bomb time had happened. And so, you know, there were interesting things starting to happen again. Money was starting to come back in terms of things getting funded again. Mm -hmm. um, and we sort of recognized that in Toronto and in Canada for that matter, there really wasn't a, a venue where a lot of people could meet each other yeah. and talk about these interesting things that were going on. Now a lot has changed over the past seven years, but back sure. then there was nothing. nothing. And, so, and so we were insane. Okay. Uh, the, the five of us, there was myself, there's Mark Evans, That's right. Matthew Ingram, Rob Hyman, and Mike McDermott. Okay. And initially there were the five of us. So we were insane. So we said, yes, you know, something must be done, let's do it. And like Eight weeks later, we had an event with 350 people. Oh my and, we had, and we had never done events. I mean, we're not, a, we're still not an event company. Sure. We we had no idea what it was that we were doing, and we ended up we ended up doing it because we felt that somebody had to do it. Mm -hmm. That there that there were there just weren't a lot of connections being made in the Toronto and Canadian web community at the at, at that time. Okay. Um, and so over the years that's changed and now there are a lot more, be it, uh, be it co-working or different types of relationships or incubators, or there's, the, the ecosystem has grown a fair bit. Yes. But I like to think that we were, that we were part of sort of turbocharging things. Sure. And so uh, here we are seven years later, Mesh continues, we, uh, we've been doing it, uh, we've, been, we've been doing the main Mesh event which happens in May. Mm -hmm. We've also taken the show on the road, we've done, we've done editions of it in Calgary, Vancouver, Edmonton, uh, and then we also, uh, we, we've done in the past um, Mesh U, which is basically a day to geek out with rock stars, so basically four practitioners by practitioners. Okay. And then we also do Mesh Marketing, which is the event that's coming up on the 7th of November, mm -hmm. which is focused on digital. So if you think about Mesh is about how the digital world is impacting how we live and work, yeah. and Mesh marketing is really honed in on, on the digital marketing world. So marketing has always been part of the main Mesh conference because, sure. because buyers and sellers and the web or you know the digital world now as it's gone well beyond the web mm -hmm. has been an important factor for a long long time but a few years ago we thought that we would do a focus event that was just on the just on the digital marketing space and that's where mesh marketing came from interesting so yeah. so not only did the five of you get crazy and and do one event now you, you started to do various events that had different focus that's right. So we've done different events with different focuses. Some of them are, you know, some of them we did and we don't do anymore. It's more, this is a passion project for us. Okay. Right? We're, it's not a, you know, we're not in, we're not a, we're not an event company. Sure. We're, we're a bunch of people that get together to do this thing because we think it matters. Yeah. Um, and so the mesh marketing, I think we're in, I think we're in year four okay. of, of the mesh marketing event. And um, the main mesh event we always choose themes for the main mesh event mm -hmm. and marketing is typically in there because if there's there's so much to do with be, be it e-commerce or mobile or, or whatever it is yeah. um, uh, discovery that that marketing is always at the top of mind of people especially um, if you look over the past seven years with the uh, that mesh has been around mm -hmm. social 
really went from what the heck is social to Two. now it is such a huge embedded part of how people live. Yes. And the, and also how marketers need to evolve. And so um, the that's always been part of Mesh. And now with Mesh Marketing, mm -hmm. we take one day and we just focus, focus on, on digital marketing. and marketing. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, you know, when, when you started it, you, you wanted to have some sort of presence and, and a conversation uh, here in Toronto, which was home to the five of you. Um, was there any sort of talk about any takeaways? You wanted to make sure that certain things were were achieved as a result of these conversations? I'm very curious about that. So, so absolutely. And if you, if you sort of say this, if you go back to this idea that it's like my dad's kind of barn was put on a show. Yeah. Um, we did this because we thought it needed to happen. Okay. So we wanted connections to be made. All right. We wanted to help sort of bring people who otherwise wouldn't know each other mm. together and be they funders or mentors or startups or people in the social sphere or basically get these people who typically wouldn't come together mm -hmm. and, and bring them together and start to sort of create a web. And as we sit here seven years later, we can talk about an ecosystem and relationships and all these sorts of things that are happening in Toronto and in Canada yeah. in the same breath that we can talk about San Francisco or London or New York. You know, there's there's sort of similar things happening here. Mm -hmm. That, you know, that, although we weren't the reason that that's happened, we were part of a lot of people who were doing similar things mm -hmm. to try and create this ecosystem and to foster that yeah. ecosystem. And so that, that has always been a key desire for us is to create those sorts of relationships. So part of it is to create those relationships. And the other one is a little bit more selfishly is there were so many cool things going on yeah. that now we're able to invite people to come here and speak and participate in the conference that frankly are things that we think are both cool yeah. and also we think it's important for people to know about. Nice. And so we have created almost a bit of a soapbox where the main mesh conference now has a bit of awareness and it's kind of, you know, people know it. Absolutely. And we're able to go off to, so when we look at, when we look at broad themes and say, hey, we think this is important, we think that is important, who are some people that we like to invite that we think are really crushing it when it comes to that, mm -hmm. we can go out, invite those people, frankly, a good portion of them are going to come, yeah. and then we're able to share that with the community more broadly, yeah. and also we get the chance to 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 to, to, to meet hear some from of them and to meet some of these people. Yeah. So it, we're, we what we try to do is bring in people that we think have an important message to tell, mm -hmm. and the and the the mesh and, and mesh marketing and sort of all of the mesh stuff has created a a reason for us to say come to Toronto. Participate in this event mm -hmm. um, and 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 share the thing that we think that that, that we sort of have decided uh, is an important theme that we want to shine a spotlight on. A third thing okay. um, is that we've we wanted to to bring focus on cool things that were happening in Canada as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can bring people from the states. We can bring people from overseas. But there's also so many cool ideas and businesses that are starting here. So it's a chance for us to sort of shine a spotlight on uh, cool men and women who are doing things in in Toronto and in Canada uh, that are that are sort of pushing the envelope and, and bringing new ideas in the digital. Space. Sure, sure. I, I might put you on the spot with this question because uh, you know. As many people have sat in that chair and realized that there's there's really no prep in this. We're just having a, yeah, it's having a conversation. But I'm, I'm very curious. You know, seven years. Um, you must have seen a lot of stuff. You know, you were just Mesh was just getting started as as a lot of these tech giants today were just getting started then. And so you've probably seen a lot of changes. Uh, and so I'm, I'm very curious if, if maybe there's a few things that pop into your mind on on what you've seen as you know whether they're issues or whether they're companies or whether they're people. Uh, you know, some of the biggest changes that you've seen yourself ever since you had that, that first one that 350 people came to? Uh, I'd say that the biggest change is how at the first mesh, mm -hmm. the folks that came were really, you know, I'm going to say bleeding edgers, right? They were folks that were very involved in the digital space early adopters of social, early adopters of, of sort of Web 2.0 principles and be it agile development or, you know, um, what, whatever, whatever it is, the, this idea of, of, of sharing in a human web and, and, and you know, uh, 
uh, software as a service and using the cloud and all these sorts of things. The folks that typically came, that came in the early days yeah. were really, I would say, bleeding edge kind of people, okay. right? And, and over time, what's happened is that the bleeding edgers have sort of made way to people who are, I'm going to say, more, more sort of um, less bleeding edgers, but folks that, that, that want to become more aware of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the, what I think that the, the most interesting thing that's happened over this time is how stuff that was bleeding edge seven years ago yeah. has become, if not fully mainstream, uh, close to mainstream, right? So you go from what is Twitter? Yeah. And then, you know, there we are using, we, we were using Twitter and taking questions via Twitter and using hashtags and stuff like that, yeah. probably the year after Twitter launched. Yeah. And now you're driving along and, you know, you're listening to CBC radio and they're like, tweet us. And, yeah. Yeah, and, and so even though Twitter isn't exactly mainstream, it is much more public. And you think about something like, like Facebook or social, you know, back in the early days, there were, it was, it was, we were starting to see blogs. Yes. Right. Just starting to see blogs, and then you know, then we saw sort of corporate blogs, and then we saw podcasts sort of starting that were voice-only podcasts, and then we saw you know video podcasts starting, and then we saw big players starting to move into podcasting, and then we saw big players starting to yeah. move into social, and then people doing less blogging, and then you get into Facebook, and you know, like the, just the the speed at which things have changed, mm -hmm. and the degree to which. Um, the human web or social web and sharing and connections mm -hmm. uh, using new tools has become commonplace is is just that is to me remarkable yeah, right so that's, that's that's one thing you just you can't get by it. The, the you know um, also the the pace at which some of the stuff has gone away you know like whatever happened to second life yeah. whatever, you know whatever happened to um, to friendster yeah, so, so some of these things that were new and shiny, mm -hmm. that that were sort of canaries in the coal mine of where things were going, that sort of came, proved a concept, and then sort of went away, and then they were they were ultimately overtaken. But the concepts were the same. So, yeah. what did blogs show us? Blogs showed us that people were people wanted to speak and people wanted to share. And people wanted to have interaction. They wanted to leave comments. They wanted to have a back and forth with with not just the not just the author of the blog, but the people coming to the blog. Wanted this interactivity. Yeah. Well, where you know what does that look like today? Well, it looks like comments on the bottom of a New York Times story. It looks like retweets. It looks like uh, liking a fan page on Facebook. So this the the initial idea of people want interactivity. Yeah. Now you see that. Everywhere. It's almost like the more things change, the more they stay the same. People are still doing those same things, but now it's it's not just on the blogs anymore. That's right. It's on all, all these other. That's platforms. right. But you saw you saw that the simplicity of the technology was enabling people to do to share. Right. They want to share. They want interactivity, and this enabled them to do it. And so now you have all these you have all these other ways that people are sharing, be it be it you know Instagram or or Flickr or or you know a video podcast or whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. But this idea that technology is connecting people, and then you see technology connecting people and helping to drive social change. I don't think yeah. that right. So so think about think about what what happened in the Middle East. Sure. Now you can't. Anybody that says the middle, all the stuff that happened in the Middle East is because of social media sure. is crazy. Yeah, it it was a factor. Yeah, and if anything, it enabled people outside of it to get a different perspective and allowed some people on the ground to connect. Do you and Matthew argue about that point? I'm very curious. The, Matthew argues about everything with everybody. Okay, <laughs> in a good way. I love yeah, that. yeah. The, but the 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 the, the idea that. That technology is enabling these connections. Mm -hmm. You saw the emergence of that sort of seven, eight years ago. Yes. Right? And now you see it just everywhere. Another, you know, another huge thing um, is is mobile. And you know, you, you hear mobile and you want to just sort of roll your eyes. Because mobile was the next big thing forever. For, yeah, and it continues to and be. It continues to be. But but in some ways, mobile being the next big thing, oh, yeah. it's like, okay, come on already. Come on with the mobile, come on, come on. But now, I mean, now we're here. I mean, mm -hmm. now you see everybody looking at their at their devices. You see, you see, um, you see 
mobile and, and apps just becoming part of how people are doing things. So, you know, in the past seven years, mobile probably spent five of those seven years being the next big thing. Yeah. And then the past two years it's been, okay, it's actually It's already here. here. Yeah. And so that's, you know, that's been fascinating because we've tried to talk about mobile and have mobile as an element in, in, in a lot of the mesh stuff that we've done over the years. Mm -hmm. and, and for a long time, I was like, okay, come on already. Just, you know, do something with mobile. We, we all see it. We see yeah. what's possible. And now it's like in a very short period of time, it's like, boom, mm -hmm. it's tilted and, and mobile and mobile in terms of, in terms of time spent on device and, you know, all these sorts of things is, is just sort of much I'm curious, you know, you say mobile, the next big thing has been the conversation was happening for years. Um, I'm curious what the next big thing is. Do you have any insights or any, any thoughts uh, on that based on, you know, your discussions with whether some of the people that are coming to Mesh or whether some of the people that you, that you work with? The, well, it's funny. I, I think that now, now, if you want to talk about mobile specifically, right? mm -hmm. so, so I mean, mobile now has established itself and People have smartphones. Mobile is now. Mobile is now. Yeah. Right? Mobile is now. And so then it's like, okay, people now have this device, they go to this device. I think that what's next is what people will actually be able to do further with that. Mm. Right? And so the deeper integration of mobile into how people live. So thinking about things like payment. Sure. Thinking about things like um, like uh, loyalty programs, like from a marketing perspective, thinking about mesh marketing and, and, and what we're going to talk about there, it's sure. like integrating mobile into how people are living and integrating that into how people choose to buy things. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I think that I think that mobile now is no longer the next big thing. It's here, and now the next question is how are we actually going to use it? People are going to expect more and more from those devices. What are some of the more new and interesting and innovative things that we're going to be accomplishing with this device? That's it, right? So now everybody's got one. Yeah. Um, they're using it all the time. They're interacting with it all the time. It's like, okay, well, what are we going to do with that? What What's going to happen next? How do we take advantage of that? I mean, I think that the that the the challenge now is sort of what does this what does all this mean for the desktop, right? So now we have so many, yeah. right? So we, have, we now have so many new devices. Mm -hmm. I have the internet on my hip. I've got this size tablet. I've got that size tablet. I've got this. I've got that. What does that? You know, we have cloud computing. We have we have sharing. We have all this sort of stuff. What does this mean for the desktop? So you know that that for me is is very interesting, and where 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 I think is uh, uh, is there's there's going to be a lot of evolution quickly over the next little while. As people start to be able to do more and more mm -hmm. with mobile devices, what does that mean for the desktop? We are already seeing desktop usage starting to decline. We're already seeing people accessing uh, web services and, and, and mobile versions of sites increasing at, a, at an exponential pace. So what does that mean for the desktop? So I mean, I for, I for one think that that's going to be fascinating because there's there's we, we've barely started in terms of in terms of sort of big legacy, let's talk, you know, let's talk governments, let's mm. talk big businesses doing things like using cloud, yeah. doing things like um, like using, uh, thinking more, thinking of software as a service as opposed to having big data centers and, and, and big dumb terminals that people sure. are, like, so, so I, I think in some ways the, the, the in, we individuals mm. have already adopted mobile big time, yeah. we've adopted cloud big time. Mm -hmm. Now it'll be really interesting to see what happens from an enterprise perspective sure. and from a government perspective, how do, the, how do these guys start to use these tools? That's very right. true. Um, with, with that in mind, I'm curious, um, you know, Microsoft is, is coming out with their, their, their brand new platform, Windows 8, yeah. uh, this week. Um, apparently, it's, you know, everything's going to be integrated, whether you're on your phone or, or their uh, new tablet or, or the desktop or laptop. Any, any thoughts? Any thoughts on that? You know, as it pertains to less people with a desktop and more people going going mobile. Well, you know, I think that one of the great things that mobile has delivered for all users mm -hmm. is some constraints. Okay? okay. So now you even have a desktop software that is being designed thinking mobile first. True. Right. And so by bringing that constraint to the table, you end up with a more elegant, tighter, less bloated experience. Mm -hmm. Right. And so from a design aesthetic perspective, even in a desktop environment, something that starts being designed for a mobile app first is 
my my guess yeah. is going to deliver a a more a crisper desktop experience. Now we'll have to see what happens with Windows because sure. you know they they've basically taken their Metro. Uh, interface that you see on Windows Phone, which, by the way, I don't have a Windows Phone, but I like Windows Phone. I think it's. I great. have one myself, and it's so simple to use. Right, and yeah. so they've taken the principles they've had there, and also that display, the tile display, yeah. and they're now applying that to the desktop. So it's funny. So when I say I'm, I'm really interested to see what happens with the desktop, well, here's an example. I mean, Windows install base is like a billion people or, or a billion uh, a billion devices around the world. You start to roll this thing out where it's almost where it's almost mobile first, mm -hmm. how does that live for people? Like, I, I'm, I'll be really be interested to see yeah. what happens. I mean, I think, I think that there is, um, I think that the, the, the concept of designing for mobile first is a really, really smart one. How it lives in a world where people are still using a keyboard or where they're still using a mouse, mm -hmm. um, where it isn't a touch screen, at least it's not a touch screen today. You know, we'll have to see how that actually rolls. But you know what? Um, as, as someone that, that has spent some time in that Microsoft ecosystem, I think it's pretty darn bold of them to be going down this path. And you can't get by the fact. I mean, those are smart folks. Yeah. And and they've sort of been to a, to an extent they've they've been a bit taken to the cleaners in the mobile sense. And so sure. now, and now, you know, if their if their attempt to to sort of uh, catch up is by putting it all on the line by going with sort of a mobile first experience in a desktop which they own, yeah, I mean they sure. own the desktop. Yeah. That's pretty bold, yeah. right? So I, I hope it's not new Coke, you know. I hope that, <laughs> I didn't go back. Um, that, but uh, but I but I, I think it's I think it's great that they're doing it. Now, I'm I'm personally very interested in seeing the product. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, it does well because I think the more op op options that people have uh, between various operating systems and various devices, I think it just makes everything better. Yeah, and I mean, uh, and Apple is Apple is known for delivering elegant, you know, beautiful solutions, right, and, mm -hmm. and beautiful devices, and and that hasn't been Microsoft's True. calling card, right? Yeah. So I think the fact that they're that they're trying for mobile first. And going for a design that is that is tighter and more constrained, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I think that's pretty neat, and yeah. uh, and I think it's sort of it's a lovely evolution for them. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see. I, I I'll be really interested because a billion people, man, that's a huge install base. It is absolutely. Um, so let's let's move on to chatting about mesh market yeah. November seventh here in Toronto. It is. Yeah. Um, and people can go to meshconference.com. Meshconference.com to buy tickets and uh, they're two ninety nine. you can buy them online. Uh, they are going up on the 2nd of November. So get, get your tickets soon. Get your tickets soon. Um, but let's talk about, you know, I'm, you know, through planning, I'm sure you're, you're getting a sense of some of the conversations that are going to be initiated by some of the speakers. Um, who are you most excited about? hearing from? I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a few. There's uh, Christina Halverson, um, uh, and Lee Odin. I mean, Lee Odin is sort of a search god. Yeah. Um, and I, I should say that with, with mesh marketing, what we do because it's a it's a one day thing, mm -hmm. and it's really focused on digital marketing. You know, we don't just talk about social. We don't just talk about we 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 talk about sort of soup to nuts. We talk about discovery broadly. We talk about social. You know, writ large, we talk about search. So I'm looking forward to Lee Odin um, for sure because because. You know the that search box mm -hmm. is the entry point for most people. It's days. still very powerful. It's very very powerful. So yeah. where you know where is that all headed for me? Mm -hmm. Is that's a fascinating topic. Now you might sort of say, I mean, search. Come on, that's not all that exciting. But think about how much time you spend in a search window or on a search results page. And I think, that, and I'm for one, very much looking forward to that. Now another one that I think is is pretty amazing. Uh, I mean, people talk about rock stars in the business. We have an actual rock star yeah. <laughs> coming, um, David Usher. And uh, David Usher just uh, just released a, a new, I don't know if we even call them CDs anymore. What do we call them? A new, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, new, new CD, a new, new CD, album. New album, yeah. yeah. He's got a new album that just came out. And, and um, you know, the, the guy is one of the best known artists in Canada, sure. has a worldwide following. What a lot of people don't know about him is that he's also an entrepreneur and very into the digital space. Yeah. And so he's going to talk about using digital mm -hmm. as a, you know, as a public figure and sort of himself as product. How does he use digital? How does he work with social? What's his personal experience? And he's going to perform. And he's going to perform. Yes. Well, it's going to be fantastic. 
Yes. That's going to be fantastic. I mean, I've, I've had this page up here and I'm looking at this. I'm very curious. And I've been wanting to, you know, find out more about what he's doing and, and some of the things that he's created and how he's, um, you know, trying to, it, it seems to me he's trying to help the, the independent musician try to figure out how do we use these things that other businesses have taken advantage of that people are utilizing to communicate with each other and, and how can the music industry, and more specifically the artists, yeah. the creators, take advantage of this? I mean, you, t you, you talk about industries or categories that have been transformed yeah. by digital. You know, and there's a lot of them. Absolutely. But I mean, music, enter the entertainment industry, yeah. completely, completely changed. Yeah. Um, and you know, and here's somebody that's in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of it, not just, uh, you know, not, not as, as an artist, as sort of a, an independent business person, if you will, but also working within, still working within that environment with labels and all that sort of stuff. And so, I mean, the guy, how, how often do you have somebody of that sort of stature who's going to get up and talk about sort of the soup to nuts, here's what I've learned, here's, and, and here's what I think. So, so for me, I mean, that's going to be, that, that's just a total highlight. And he's, he's actually come to the main mesh conference a couple of times ah. and like come and, and, and uh, I know that there's one venture that he's ended up involved with, which was a connection that happened at Mesh, nice. where he met somebody, a guy from Vancouver, they started something together. I mean, so these are the sorts of things that happen that, we, that, 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 that are humbling for me because you say, what was it you were hoping to accomplish? Well, that's the sort of thing. Yeah, that's fantastic. And yeah. I'm really looking forward to the conference, but specifically uh, listening to what uh, David Escher has to say. Um, so, November, again, as, as we wind down this conversation, um, November 7th, two ninety nine dollars prices until November the 2nd. Correct. Um, and it's going to be here in Toronto. Where is the location, Stuart? Where is uh, it we're today? having it at the, is the uh, I think it's called the Blue Mountain Appell Hall at the Toronto Reference Line. Toronto Reference Line. Which is a fantastic room. Great venue. Um, and so I, it's there, it's one day. So uh, it's a full, full day. And we really were covering, we're covering a lot of ground um, as far as the impact that digital is having mm -hmm. in the marketing world. Uh, and uh, sales have been really strong and we really hope to see a lot of people out. Fantastic. And if people wanted to connect with you, how could they do that? So I'm on Twitter at Stuart Ma, S-T-U-A-R-T-M-A. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way. Or you can always hit me on email, Stuart at StuartMcDonald.ca. Awesome. Or info at MeshConference.com. Perfect. And again, so thank you so much. For joining us, really appreciate it. Find out more, go to meshconference.com. You can also follow them on Twitter, at MeshCon, and the hashtags are going to be uh, MM12. Exactly. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for coming in. That's really really good. appreciate it. My name is Kareem Kanji. You can find me on Twitter, at Kareem Kanji. Look forward to chatting with you soon. Bye-bye.